What's going on everybody, k to the 2 here with week 6 of the MPL. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, why are you doing week 6 when this is supposed to be your week 9 upload? Uh, well, I got out of order, I lost my recording, so I'm gonna be, uh, on the other side. I forgot to save the recording after the battle. Um, so I'm going to be watching from Dan's point of view, uh, and... I never ended up getting my artwork for this week, not sure what happened, I think I might have lost it or I didn't communicate with Zeke in order to get my artwork, but that doesn't matter because I'm still here to bring you week 6 against the Los Angeles Nido Kings and Tony Danza, or Crobat for the win, former GBA champion. This is going to be a great game, I can already tell. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go over what I brought because I don't ex exactly remember what my game plan was coming into this just because it's been about a month since this match happened so uh, I just watched through I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what everybody's set was I believe I was running a bulky sword stance scissor uh, with bullet punch sword stance bug bite and roost uh, I do remember bringing Choice Banded to Zoomeril, uh, that had Aqua Jet, Play Rough, Super Power, and Knock Off. Uh, Super Power, I don't remember what it was for, I think it was for possibly Heatran to hit it neutrally, or hit, it was a good middle ground is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, Knock Off, of course, great utility. Uh, next up I'm bringing a Spadef. Skarmory, because that is my best check to a specially attacking Landorus, uh, as well as it can take HP fires from Diancy fairly well. Uh, and this this Skarm is a little bit different since I'm bringing the uh, Iron Head over the Brave Bird, and I am bringing uh, Stealth Rocks, of course. It's my rocker on the team. Uh, next up, I'm bringing a Mixed Defensive Sylveon. Mixed Defensive helps me switch into Garchomp basically every time unless he's like Choice Banded with Iron Head, but even if he is, then I have multiple switch-ins, that being uh, Mega Scizor, Skarm, and uh, Rotom. Um, so I'm, I have the Hyper Voice, uh, Wish Protect, and Heal Bell. Heal Bell, of course, that's kind of a necessity. Uh, on a team that has Azumarill and Mega Scizor, since they both like to get burned somehow, for some reason. Uh, next up, I am bringing a Work Up Infernape that has Mach Punch, I think, um, Fire Blast, and Hidden Power Ice. Hidden Power Ice is going to hit uh, everything on, well, with the moves that I'm bringing, I hit everything on his team super effectively, except for the Mega Diancy, which I can just hit with the Mach Punch. Uh, and lastly, I'm bringing Choice Scarf Rotom. Uh, that has Volt Switch, Hidden Power Ice, again, uh, between those two with Hidden Power Ice, or what? I already said that, with Hydro Pump, uh, I hit everything on his team super effectively, except for the Porygon, uh, which I have Trick for that, I just hit my pen, uh, Trick is going to help take its Aviolite off, uh, which makes it just infinitely, well, two times, not infinitely, two times easier to deal with than it was before. Uh, because, well, two times, one and a half times, whatever math escapes me. Uh, anyway, that is what I'm bringing. Uh, as we can see, looking at the team preview, uh, he does have the Thunderous, uh, which I was expecting to be choice somehow because it does outspeed my entire team. Uh, I traded, we traded Thunderous and Rotom back in week two or three, uh, I think it was week three, uh, that was a flip-flop and we're bringing them against each other, so hopefully we can see how they do. Uh, I'm going to lead off with Rotom because it is my best lead against his entire team uh, because, as I said, it hits everything super effectively. Uh, Tangrowth is the one thing I'm not really going to want to stay in on, uh, and I can't really fire off Volt Switches all over the place. Uh, because he does have Garchomp. So, he's going to be leading off with his Thunderous, and I'm leading off with Scarf Rotom, as I said. Uh, he ends up going for the Volt Switch, so right off the bat, I can tell this is a Choice Scarf Thunderous. 
Uh, that's going to help somewhat because that means he will not be able to thunder wave me, or at least if he's not carrying Choice Scarf Thunderwave. That would be weird. Uh, I'm gonna go for the Hydro Pump turn one because I can't really Volt Switch, like I said. Uh, hopefully, I could have hit the landers that switched in. Unfortunately, that's not the case. He brings out his Tangrowth as I miss my Hydro Pump. Uh, and right here, I didn't want to stay in, so I'm going to try and catch up really fast. He goes for the knockoff. I'm going to show... Uh, I'm going to scout for the Poison Jab, which he does end up carrying. Uh, so I go into Mega Scizor, get a free Mega off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up a Sword Stance. I know it's a little bit early. Uh, in the game to be doing this, but I wanted to let him know that I am Sword Stance and that I can threaten his team because it's going to probably probably not change the way he's going to play, but it uh, just opens up opportunities for Azumarill to uh, do well later in the match as well as Infernape because he won't expect uh, Infernape to be running probably work up or anything like that. Right here, I know for a fact that he's bringing Fire Blast, uh, especially since he brought Garchomp in on the Scizor. I can already tell that uh, he was going to run Fire Blast, and that's indeed what he does. I'm going to go ahead and go straight for the Wish in case he wanted to go for like an Iron Head or a Poison Jab, whatever Garchomp gets. Um, so I set up the Wish. Uh, I'm just going to go for the Hyper Voice. Go just scout what kind of set this Tangrowth is. I see he's Assault Vest, uh, and right here I'm going to get my health back from the Wish at the end of the turn, so it was not a waste at all. Uh, if he wanted to go for Poison Jab, which I kind of suspected he wouldn't, uh, that was really going to help out. So right here I'm going to go into uh, Skarmory as he reveals the Hidden Power Fire. I didn't want to go into Mega Scizor in case he was carrying it, and I know that Skarmory can take Hidden Power Fires uh, because I am specially defensive. Now right here, he's going to want to switch out uh, because he's probably fearing the Brave Bird. It allows me a free chance to set up my rocks, uh, which he, looking at the beginning uh, team preview, he doesn't really have any form of hazard removal, so those rocks are going to be there to stay. Unless I were to defog them away, but I don't have defog on the Skarmory. Uh, right here, I'm going to go into Sylveon again, uh, because I know it can take uh, any sort of hit that this wants to go for. Uh, he's going to Volt Switch out, leave me about 75%, and he's going to go into his Landers. Now, right here, I expected the Sludge Wave. And I expected to live it, uh, but instead, he brought Iron Tail, and that's going to completely wreck <laughs> Sylveon. So, uh, yeah, that happened. Sylveon dies, just straight up dies to that Iron Tail. Not really going to matter too much. Uh, right here, I'm going to go into Rotom, uh, and I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Ice. Uh, Hidden Power Ice was going to hit the... Landorus and his most likely switch in of Tangrowth, uh, which it does even to an Assault Vest, uh, that's doing about 30%. I go for another one, I stayed in, hoping that he would try and knock me off, which he actually does. I didn't expect him to go for the Giga Drain right there, because, I don't know, I, I just, predictions. I don't know exactly what I was thinking, uh, because this match was a month ago. Uh, right here... Uh, because I know that he would probably want to uh, stay in and go for a Giga Drain, uh, get some health back, or switch out into Sporygon. I'm going to go for the trick, and it's going to take off the Sporygon to Violate, which means Rotom is going to be able to change up its move, go for a Volt Switch, and go out into something that can take uh, probably, I don't know, Try Attack, if that's what he wanted to go for. However, he is going to go for the Discharge, uh, and he's not really going to want to stay in. Hopefully I don't get parried. I don't. Um, he's going to go ahead and switch right out into his uh, defensive Mega Garchomp, because you can tell he's defensive with the way that he's playing it. I'm going to go for the Sword Stance. I decided, you know what, I really just need damage on this thing. Uh, I'm willing to sack uh, Scizor here just to get off some damage. So I'm going to go for the Bullet Punch, 
uh, does just about 40%, uh, and he's going to hit me with the Rocky Helmet and the Rough Skin, and he misses Fire Blast, which was really unfortunate, especially since the very next turn, I kill him with a crit. Uh, now, Scizor should be dead right now. He definitely should be dead. Uh, and his Garchomp should still be alive. If this were the case, I would have gone straight into Azumarill, uh, and it probably would have played out a whole lot differently. Who knows how it would have happened. Uh, and he basically just has to sack off his Thunderous here, uh, because it will die to another Rock Switch in. Uh, Bullet Punch brings it down to about 25%. He kills me with a Bolt Switch, and uh, because he has Switch Initiative, I get to see what he goes into, and I can react accordingly. Uh, he goes into Mega Diancie, uh, thinking that because I don't have uh, freaking, what's it called, uh, Bullet Punch, uh, that he'd be able to survive or do anything, I don't know, really. Um, Right here, I'm going to go ahead and actually show the Iron Head, hoping that he would stay in, go for the Hidden Power Fire. He doesn't. Uh, I'm going to be able to hit this Porygon with an Iron Head as it switches in, gets his download uh, download boost for uh, the special attack. Uh, he's going to be able to hit me with a Discharge at plus one, and I'm going to tank that so well. It does about 55% to a ah, to a specially defensive Skarmory and uh, Skarm is just going to clean up this Porygon with another Iron Head so you get to see Skarmory getting a kill with Iron Head you don't see that every day you like never see that Skarm's gonna stay in here get back up to over or just around 50% uh, I'm not going to want to stay in with Skarmory uh, against the Lander so I'm just gonna go ahead sacrifice Rotom here uh, Rotom did its job. It got uh, plenty of damage against the Tangrowth, uh, and it tricked the Porygon, so it did its job, basically. Uh, Porygon goes down. I am going to go straight into... Uh, what did I go into? Yep, I go into my Infernape. I'm going to show him the HP Ice here, uh, because Hidden Power Ice is going to hit it super effectively. Uh, as he's just going to go ahead and sacrifice his Thunderous to the rocks. Good play. Uh, means he gets uh, switch initiative into anything that he wants. Uh, I'm suspecting that the Diancy, of course, uh, as you see it come in, I was expecting it to come in because it can live anything I go for. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make the ballsy switch into Skarmory here. He could have gone for Hidden Power Fire. But uh, he makes the safe play going for the Earth Power. And because I get this extra leftovers recovery, I am sitting in a very comfortable position uh, for the incoming Hidden Power Fire. Now, he gets the Hidden Power Fire off, and look how Skarm takes this. Without that leftovers recovery, I most likely wouldn't have lived and gotten that kill with Iron Head, so that was huge. That swung the game into basically a definite win in my favor. Uh, of course, Hex was really on my side this match. Uh, it was really unfortunate to see for Danza. He was really demoralized by especially the Scizor uh, coming in, getting the miss with the Fire Blast and then the crit the very next turn. That really screwed him uh, and got into his head. Uh, but right here, Infernape's going to be able to come in, fire off a Hidden Power Ice, and take out the Landorus, and then connect with a Fire Blast to take out Tangro. So that was a great game. Of course, as I said, it was pretty hacksy, unfortunately. But, you know, you win some, you lose some. And this week, the Hax Gods just favored me. Uh, I wish that we could have had a hacksless game because it would have provided for, I don't know, more exciting content maybe? Uh, but you know, this is the MPL. Uh, I believe after this week we were sitting at 5-1, uh, it's, I don't remember the differential. It doesn't matter because we're all the way, way back. 
Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, go ahead and leave a like, and I will see you guys next time.